and welcome to Art Today. I'm Rachel Neese, and today we are going to be playing with something called a jelly plate, making monoprints. So to kind of explain what a monoprint is before we get into all this craziness and fun, is a mono print, mono meaning one, and print is making a print. And if you are on social media at all these days, you have probably seen someone using what is called a gel plate or jelly plate. Now you can make jelly plates on your own. There's different recipes out there for you to find. They don't last a whole long time, but they're enough for a few hours of fun with younger children or just doing something that you don't wanna invest in and make sure that you want to do this. But it starts at about $8 and goes up from there for an actual jelly plate and you can get them at any hobby art store. You can get them online. I got mine off of Amazon, I believe. This one is a six by six inch one and I believe it was about $16 on Amazon. So that's gonna be the most expensive thing you need for this project. The next thing you're gonna need is some sort of paper. You can get watercolor paper. This is a watercolor card. You can use old stationary paper if you've got that lying around. Printer paper works great. You can also use watercolor or multimedia purpose paper. Um, if you have little kids, just make sure you have plenty of paper. I did this with my niece over the holidays, who is four, and it completely ended in tears because we ran out of paper. So if you've got little kids that really enjoy the art process, make sure you got the paper, because um, it broke my heart. I'm like, we're done. But you know, we got more paper, we did more the next day. So jelly plate paper, then the next thing that you definitely need is going to be a brayer, unless you're using markers, you don't need a brayer with markers, but if you're using paint, paint or ink, you do need the brayer. Some kind of printmaking ink, water-based is great, especially if you're working with the younger kids. You can use any sort of acrylic paint. You can use, this one I just thought was pretty because it's like green and shimmery and reminded me of a dragon. Actually, I think it's called uh, Yellow Flash. I thought it was called Yellow Dragon. Um, any type of acrylic paint. And if you are doing this with younger children, you will probably want to avoid those. The water washable markers work perfectly. This is all I did with my niece and it was hours of fun. We got the stamps out and involved. Um, you're gonna need something to put the paint or ink in or the brayer on if you're going that route. And I'll show you different examples. We'll do a few different types. I do want to tell you for cleanup, however, you will definitely want to invest in some baby wipes. It's gonna be a lot easier to wipe these guys down, the jelly plate and your area and your kids if they are doing this. Um, I think this giant thing of 120 wipes was like two bucks at Walgreens. So make sure you have those. And if you have stamps, like just the regular stamps lying around, I've got a thank you and an XOXO left over from wedding stuff like 10 years ago. I don't remember what I used it for, but um, my niece really got involved with using not just the jelly plate, but the stamps as well as her hand. That's a perfect tool. So to show you a few examples before we really get into it, the most popular thing to do is to go outside and have a nice walk. You can walk the animals if you have them, do a nature walk with the kids. Make sure you're not touching things you don't know, like don't touch poison ivy or anything like that. Collect a bunch of leaves and flowers and you can use them in your art. So it's kind of like a win-win situation. And then you can make prints like this one. And these are all using ink. So I believe we use Speedball ink with these. I did this at a conference earlier in the year and it was a bunch of art teachers out in the woods collecting, like we just kept running out and grabbing more leaves and it was so much fun. And you can make all kinds of things. 
And I'll show you guys how to do that. Just be careful when you're collecting your foliage. The other real popular way to use the jelly plate now, um, I found extremely difficult. This is my only example I was able to do with the other art teachers and it's where you're using magazines and paint and you pretty much are taking the ink from a, a magazine and putting it onto the jelly plate and pulling it off and it's giving you a negative if you remember old cameras with the film it's giving you a negative like that and then you're putting it on the paper um, a lot harder than what they make it look like on all the social media but if that's some some kind of route you want to go that is an option um, we will not be showing this today because it took me like 20 minutes just to get this little guy I don't have enough patience for that. Um, I also don't have enough magazines. Now the other option, and this one was extremely kid friendly, are the markers. So the first print I did with my niece is this one and I allowed her to color with the markers. You do have to kind of turn them on their sides, not use the point, use like the, the fatter side of the marker and I'll show you that. But you let them color with the younger kids, it's really important for their development to let them explore. So if you're real big on messes and your kid being messy, maybe put them outside, make sure you're not doing anything. Um, I did get in trouble with my mother, with uh, my niece's grandmother, because she was messy. And um, so yeah, I got yelled at my mom by my mom for making art. Uh, not the first time, but it's been a while. Um, just make sure you're ready to clean up. This is another one that my niece did. We used a little leaf and we made a negative and then she took the leaf and pressed it in. This is all with marker, which is really cool. After a while, she figured out she could actually use the jelly plate as a stamp itself. So she started like dipping her hand and like coloring the jelly plate, dipping her hand in it and using that. Um, this is probably by far my favorite because it is her four year old handprint. And she dipped that in. She's also using the kind of as her own personal ink. Well, she was dipping stamps in those. So we've got that one. Um, really, they, you know, they look abstract. You can tell a child did them, but these are wonderful memories. If you get cards, like the, the card paper and want to have your kids do this, this would be really cool for thank you notes or holiday cards. Um, just something real special, not something everyone else is doing. Um, I will treasure them. I know there's a lot of aunts and grandparents out there that will definitely ch like cherish these as well. So we are gonna take a quick break. And when we get back, I'll walk you through how to use the jelly plate with markers and then with paint and ink. So get your stuff together and get ready to follow along and we'll see you right back here after these messages. As a student in the Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education, and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. Hi, I'm Renee Phillips, Director of Communication for Mobile County Public Schools and your host of Homeroom. I invite you to join us as we learn about the great things happening in our schools across the county. On Homeroom, you get to meet students and educators who are in our schools every day doing wonderful things. Join us as we take an in-depth look at their stories, issues, people, and policies of the Mobile County Public Schools. That's Homeroom. You can find it weekly right here on the MCPSS TV network. Hi, and welcome back to Art Today. Today we are making mono prints with a gel plate or jelly plate. So let's get into how to use the washable markers to make our mono prints. So the first thing you need is your jelly plate. Now when you buy these, they'll come with film on the other, on both sides. Um, make sure you take the gel off at least one side 
You can take it off both. You can see this thing's fun to play with. Don't eat it. If you've got little kids that really like to touch things um, or scratch stuff, make sure they know that this costs money and they need to be nice to it. So we're gonna be nice to it. So go ahead, put it out. You kind of want it on a non-porous area. Um, I think on wood, it might leave a little bit of a impression. So just be careful with that. Now, the next thing you're going to need are your markers. Ooh, and I can tell Vashti did not close all my markers. We'll see if that one still has ink in it. So let your kids pick whatever colors they want. And instead of trying to draw on your jelly plate with the tip, it's gonna take forever of the marker. You wanna kind of show them to lay it down on its side and use like the fatter area. And with the younger kids, like with my niece, it's really just exploring and playing. So you can just scribble on it. If you really wanted to draw something, you could, we'll draw a couple like little hearts to give you guys an example. So you can draw with the markers and you just wanna fill up your jelly plate. So wherever you see color, there's going to be color on your paper once you do something that's called pulling your print, once you pull it, you'll see the color, but wherever there is nothing on the jelly plate, there's just gonna be blank space on your paper. So depending on what your artist wants to do, just kind of let them have fun. Like I said, my niece got real into this and even like freaked out and cried when we ran out of paper. So if you've got a kid that might be doing the same thing, just make sure you're stocked up on paper. So I'm just kind of filling this up. It does not need to be perfect. You can go over colors and mix them. With younger kids, you're gonna have the kids that really don't want their markers to get mixed at all because it messes them up. So allow those kids to kind of do what they need to do. But then you also have kids like my niece who loves to mix colors. You can see she definitely used the yellow quite a bit um, because it is her aunt's favorite color, but it definitely got a little a little dirty and mucky. The lighter colors and markers tend to do that if you remember from when you were in school or the last time you used markers. Um, and that is okay. Now I have heard of people using the ink markers, the ones that are like alcohol based, but I've also been told that they might stain the jelly plate. So this thing's 16 bucks. Art supplies. I'll spend a million dollars on art supplies by the time I die. Um, so I don't want to have to buy these over and over again. I would definitely just go with the, the water-based ones, which is great because you can get those just about anywhere. Now you can see I have covered my jelly plate. I'm going to take my piece of paper and with kids be ready. They're not going to get this exactly right. So if they're a perfectionist, maybe try to help them get it centered in the middle the best way you can. Um, when I am actually teaching, the best way I can do is have, have the kids kind of fold the paper in half and then they're going to try to center it in the middle and then just let it fall. Now you can place it other ways, but we just want to get it on top as centered as we can. Little kids, they're not going to care if it's centered. You can always cut off the edges if it's not centered. So the next thing they need to do is they need to rub this guy. So you can do it with the palm of your hand or with the back of your hand. If you got any marker on you, it's going to get on the back of the, the paper, but that's okay. Who's going to see the back once you're done? So just kind of give it a good rub. Um, you don't need to squish real hard. You're just kind of rubbing it. It will come right off the jelly plate. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to pull it off. That is called making a pull or pulling a print. And as you can see, all the marker comes right off onto my paper and it is really super fun. So we're gonna do a couple more things with the jelly plate. 
Now, I feel like I pulled all the markers off and I'm fine, but if you need to, you can get a baby wipe, wipe it down, it'll dry real quick. The next thing I'm going to do, this is something my niece kind of figured out on her own and it's really fun to just like watch the kids figure it out. You color the jelly plate. She was really kind of interested on in what colors made, like what combinations. So I just did red and blue, which should make a purple where they touch. Um, we're also going to add some of the kind of funky yellow and see if we can get any orange. But she just kind of colored on this and then her biggest stamp was her hand. Um, again, I did get in trouble with my mom. So if you're not up for that, be prepared to talk with your kids beforehand. Don't stick your hand in the marker. Um, but for me, the messier it is, the better you're doing at your art. So at that point, you can take any type of stamp that you want. I'm going to go with this dinosaur guy because he's kind of big and I might be able to get all my colors in one. So you just want to kind of pop them on the jelly plate. You don't need to give them a huge push. You know, for a four year old, they're probably going to push a lot harder than an adult um, just because they don't have that strength. But you're going to get a print on your on your jelly plate, but you're also getting stuff on our stuff. You're getting color on your, your stamp. So you can move your stamp over to the paper and you get a nice multicolored dinosaur there. But the other thing we can do is make a ghost print. And what a ghost print is, is where you've already pulled a print and then you put the paper back down. So I've made a print. I'm also going to throw in a stamp um, and the, you can make your own stamps. It's pretty fun. You can look into that if you ever want to. Um, that is a stamp I've made. We're going to put that one there and kind of press it. And then we're going to press the XOXO a couple times. And then we're going to pick that up. And right up there. So we have our dinosaur at the top. So I'm going to try to make this come out a little differently. Pop it on the bottom, give it a nice rub, and then see what we've got when we pull it up. So there you go. I didn't even put any more ink where that dinosaur was. I used him to stamp here, but then I also got a really cool print. So you can do so many types of things with this. You can really let the kids explore. I promise um, it could be hours of fun if you really want to. Once you're done, um, because it is the washable marker, marker, I mean, it's pretty easy cleanup. Just stick the kid in the bath. It'll come off with a good scrub. Um, we did use a little bit of a coffee scrub on my niece just to get it off her hands so my mom didn't freak out. But a good study bath will also take care of it. So go ahead and use the baby wipe, clean up your jelly plate. And when we come back, I will show you how to use ink and paint on your poles. I'll see you right after these messages. Thank you. You're welcome. Ayla, hi. Oh, hi, Sierra. How are you? Good. How are things? Things couldn't be better. What do you mean? Well, I just started this new job as a school teacher with the Mobile County Public Schools, and it has been a life changer. Great benefits, the hours are great, and great students. Just the overall, it's a great opportunity. Oh wow, that sounds great. Yeah. I'm gonna look into that. You should. For more information, visit mcpss.com slash job opportunities. Hey, and welcome back to working with jelly plates and mono printing. Again, I am Rachel Meese, and I'm so excited that I get to do this with you. Please don't forget to check out our other videos on YouTube at MCPSS TV. So again, on YouTube, we've got plenty of art. We would love for you to join us for more than just our jelly plates. So let's get back to our jelly plate. I've got it nice and clean from the markers. We're now going to use some paint and then some ink as well. 
So with the acrylic paint, you do not have to spend a whole lot of money. Um, I think I probably spent a little bit more because I'm like, ooh, shiny things. Um, so I got shiny paint, uh, metallic paint at just one of the local art stores. Now the cool thing about the paint, you don't actually need to put paint and then use the roller. You can actually just take the paint and dribble it onto the jelly plate and then use the roller. So just give your paint a little squeeze. I'm probably using too much, it will be okay. There's never enough, Oop. maybe I need to shake that one up. That one came out a little goopy. Oop. Maybe this one's just goopy, we will find out. Huh. We'll figure it out. So. If your first print doesn't come out the way you like it, that is okay. So the next thing you need to do, grab your trusty little brayer and just pretty much smear the paint around. My brayer is not rolling around a whole lot like it would with ink because it's not sticking, but I am smearing my paint. So next thing, put my brayer down where it can be clean. Now this is the part where if you wanted to use other stamps, you could use stamps, you could use your finger or a, a little light tool and draw in the paint. But what I really enjoy doing is taking the dogs for a walk, getting some leaves and using the leaves of my art. So I'm actually going to put these vein side down because I'm gonna actually pull twice and you'll see what I mean once we do it. So I'm going to try to arrange my leaves to the way I like them. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do this. And you can experiment maybe the first few times you pull your prints, you don't like them. That is okay. So place your leaves on there. Next, you wanna get your paper. Try to get it in the center. Pop it on there and then you're going to rub it just the way, the same way you did it with the markers. Um, make sure you're kind of holding it. The paint will make it a little bit more slippery than it would be with the markers. So you want to kind of hold with one hand, rub with the other. That way you're not like just smearing the paper on top of the jelly plate. So once I have the whole thing kind of smoothed over, I'm going to pull my print and then you can see the negative space where the leaves are. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna set that one aside to dry. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna gently pick up my leaves. I'm gonna flip them over because they probably have um, paint on the little leaf side. So we can actually probably get three different little projects out of this and I will show you in a second. So I'm gonna do what's called a ghost print now. I'm just going to take my paper. I've already pulled once. I've got paint left on there. I'm going to stick my paper down, give it a nice rub, and then I'm going to pull my ghost print. And it looks a little different, but you can see the little veins from the leaves that I pulled up. I really prefer this one to the first one. It just depends on your personal preference. So the next thing we can do with the paint, if we really wanted to, make sure you shake it up. I'm going to use the purple, oop. See, I did not shake it up enough the first time. And I am just simply doing purple. I'm not going to get too fancy. I'm not gonna clean my roller though. And I'm just gonna go in, get that around the jelly plate. And if you notice, I did not clean the jelly plate between and now I'm gonna put my leaves back on, but I'm putting them with the vein side up that was touching the paint in the first pull. And I'm just gonna put them together a little differently, arrange them how you want. I'm going to grab another piece of paper. This time it's watercolor paper, so it's a little stiffer. And I'm gonna put it down the exact same way and really hold it, give it a nice, even rub all over the jelly plate and we're gonna see what we come up with. So let's pull that one and there we go. We have a whole different look with the veins of the leaves. 
I could even move the leaves, put this back down, see what happens. That is up to you. But real quick, what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to remove the leaves. I'm going to give my gel plate a quick wipe. And then we're going to pull one more using the ink. And so I probably want to clean my brayer a little bit too. And this is just temporary. When you're taking care of your brayer, you probably want to wash it in like lukewarm water with some nice soap and then dry it off. Now I'm going over to the printmaking ink. So this is just for printmaking. I'm going to use blue and yellow. So it means I should get some green in there as well, which will be fun. Kind of make sure my brayer is dry. Um, don't try this at home, kids. I'm an art teacher. All my clothes are messy and covered in things, but I would have probably used a paper towel if I had one near me, if I had thought about that. So now I'm going to take my brayer and you just kind of move it back and forth in your ink. And you do want to do this separately and not on your gel plate because otherwise you're just like mushing it into your gel plate. You want this to go very smoothly. So now I have nice blues, yellows, and this real pretty green. And I'm just kind of playing around with it, getting it on my gel plate. I can see some places where my gel plate's still kind of clear. And I think that's real pretty. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my stamp, stick it in there. So essentially I am pulling off the ink I just put on there. I'm going to do a couple of the XOs. I think it still has some marker on it. So that might give us something cool. Who knows? Maybe you should clean your stuff. I didn't. And then I am going to take my watercolor card here. I'm going to do something a little different. So I have a little bit more control. I'm going to pick up my, my jelly plate. In this way, I can kind of control where on this card everything is going because I don't want it to go on the back. And I'm just gonna kind of lightly plop it on. And then just like with the paper, I'm gonna give it kind of a nice little pressure. You can't really rub this as much your hand's gonna stick, but give it some pressure, pull off the jelly plate, put that aside to clean. And now I have a nice little thank you card. I can add some more stuff to it. If I don't like it, I can try it again. But there are so many different things that you can do with these jelly plates. Um, I went in a little skeptical when I was playing around with the other art teachers. I am now obsessed with this thing. So go out, have fun, get messy. Remember a good bath will get all that art stuff off of you. And enjoy making your art. And I will see you in our next episode.